I make these videos in advance and schedule them. So in front of us, we have every Nikon branded Z mount lens current to the making of this video. So I hope that the newer photographers learn something and the experienced ones, maybe you'll just be entertained. Today, I wanna to talk about the use case for every single one of these lenses. These large lens videos are totally improvised. More experienced photographers, if you could just fill in details and use cases, that'll help out the new folks. And for the new folks, welcome to the Z mount system. Let's begin. The Nikkor Z DX 12 to 28 millimeter is a DX or crop sensor lens that has this nifty feature called power zoom. This will allow you to use buttons on the back of your camera to smoothly zoom in and zoom out, making this an exceptional lens for content creation and video. But it's no slouch for pictures. 12 to 28 is wide enough to do some astro work, to do some landscapes, some wide portraits, and some general walking around. The Nikkor Z 14 to 30, again, is a wide angle zoom. It's a constant f4 aperture, which isn't a big deal because this lens is really popular for landscape photographers who usually shoot at a higher aperture anyway, and also astro photographers who do the same. 14 is also wide enough to get into some architecture, cityscapes, nightscapes, etc. You might even use this for wide angle portraits, but the background may not be as blurry as you'd like. This may also be a good place to start if you want to do some real estate. The Nikkor Z 14 to 24 f 2.8s will basically do everything that the 14 to 30 will do just a little bit better. So that'll be your cityscapes, your landscapes, your nightscapes, your astro, your real estate, of course, and super fun wide portraits. The f2.8 will give you a better background for that. The DX16-50 to f3.5-6.3 to is a good place to start. With every Nikon Z mount crop sensor camera, this will probably come as a kit lens at a discount. 16 to 50, f3.5 to 6.3 will let you explore many different types of photography, such as landscapes, cityscapes, wide angle portraits, and regular portraits, street photography, and just kind of walking around. It won't do macro, and it won't do sports, action, and wildlife, and it won't do anything that I just listed particularly super well. But when you incorporate the 1.5 crop factor, this gives you a mid-range zoom to explore a lot of different types of photography. We're still in the same territory of genre genres that we've been talking about with the Nikkor Z 17-28 f2.8. The use case for this lens is your landscapes and your cityscapes and your astro and everything else we've been talking about. Although you may find for architecture and even crazier cityscapes, you may actually prefer 14mm instead of 17 the Nikkor Z DX18-140 f3.5-6.3 is what you might call an all-rounder. This lens will let you do just about anything, from landscapes to cityscapes, a little bit of astro, even portraits, maybe little league sports, and even some wildlife. A focal range of 18-140, to 140, adding in the 1.5 crop factor, of course, will allow you to do all kinds of things. It might be the best way to explore all kinds of genres to figure out exactly what you like. And that'll help you determine what lens that's more specialized for your interests that you'll end up getting next. On that note, if you're considering picking up any of these lenses, there's a link in the description. If you buy from there, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It just helps out the channel. But I encourage you to buy from wherever you want. The Nikkor Z 20mm f1.8s is a prime lens, meaning it doesn't zoom. Why would you get a 1.8 prime? Because it'll do pretty much everything we've been talking about at lower ISOs, letting in more light at f1.8. Prime lenses are generally better optically. Keep in mind f1.8 does result in a shallower depth of field. The Nikkor Z 24mm f1.8s will do just about everything that the 20mm will do, but at 24mm we start to move away from architecture and real estate. But this will still be a good option for landscapes, astro, cityscapes, and in my opinion is a little more normal looking for scenic portraits. The benefit of using a prime lens at 24mm instead of a 14 to 30 or the 14 to 24 as primes are generally going to have better color, sharpness, and intertonal detail. The Nikkor Z DX 24mm f1.7 gets the benefits of being a prime lens that we mentioned, and when you factor in the 1.5 crop factor, that makes this a 36mm lens. It moves us out of the territory of real estate and architecture, and into the territory of a great street lens, walk around, scenic portraits, as 35mm happens to be my favorite focal length for scenic portraits, and while maybe not super popular for astro, you can still get it done. Landscapes, no problem. The Nikkor Z 24-70mm f4s, it's an FX lens, so no crop factor. So 24 
is 24. So that puts us in the territory that we already discussed with that 24 millimeter focal length. We are officially in the territory of working lenses. Lenses that you can take to events, a single lens that you can take to a portrait shoot and make money with. 24 to 70 will cover portrait types from scenic to headshots and everywhere in between. You can do some astro with 24 millimeter. You can do some landscape with 24 millimeter. You're probably not doing any wildlife, but with this particular lens, you could probably get some bugs and things. Not quite to the degree of a macro lens, however, which we'll get to later. This is what we call a mid-range zoom, and it's a staple in many photographers' bags. This is a focal range that just gets it done. The Nikkor Z 24-200 f4 6.3 is what we call a wide range zoom. This lens will cover the 24 to 70 range that we already talked about, so any of those genres, and pushing it even further to 200 millimeter, which isn't gonna get you professional sports or professional wildlife, but it will definitely let you dabble in those two. You could probably do little league sports, and you could probably get some zoo shots. It'll be great for street photography, walking around, vacations where you're capturing memories. It's a lens that does a lot of things. A good choice for exploring almost every type of photography to see what you're really into. The Nikkor Z 24-70 f 2.8s. This is another mid-range zoom that does a whole lot of things. All types of portraits, walk around, street photography, cityscapes, landscapes, a little bit of astro, but if that becomes your passion, you'll probably want something wider. And that's about all the ones I can think of. The Nikkor Z 24-120 f4s. This is a lens with high optical quality that'll do everything that we've talked about around the 24 millimeter range. So landscapes, cityscapes, street photography, perfect for walking around, great for a vacation, and it will definitely get some portraits done. Although you may wish you had blurrier backgrounds. Up until you get to about 85 millimeters in the 24 to 120 range, where F4 can still give you perfectly good backgrounds, even more so at 120 millimeters. We're not quite in the territory of even little league sports or amateur level wildlife, but other than that, this lens really is doing it all. The Nikkor Z 24 to 50 F4 to 6.3 is kind of an odd focal range. We're still hanging around the 24 millimeter area, which we've talked about on many other lenses. And 50 millimeter is a pretty useful focal length, but we have the drawback of it being F6.3 at 50 millimeters. So for now, I think it's better to just not recommend this lens. This lens is a kit lens with the Nikon Z5. It's really geared towards just giving you a lens so you can shoot things. You can barely start exploring the many genres of photography that you may end up loving. I know that sounds doom and gloom, but it's just kind of an awkward lens. The Nikkor Z 26 millimeter f2.8 is what they call a pancake lens. At 26 millimeters, you're doing some landscapes, you're doing some cityscapes, some wide angle street, some wider portraits I suppose, although 26 is not common for that. The main use case for this lens is just being so tiny that you can keep a super low profile and just throw a camera in your pocket with this lens attached. It will literally fit in a coat pocket. The Nikkor Z 28mm f2.8. The use case for this lens is a little bit of wide portraits, some landscapes, a little bit of cityscapes. Although in my opinion, 28mm is kind of starting to drift away from interesting cityscapes. It's definitely drifted away from Astro, and we're out of the territory of real estate and architecture. The Nikkor Z 28-75mm f2.8 is another mid-range zoom, and we've pretty much covered mid-range zooms and what they're good for. This is just a slightly less expensive and wider aperture option to the 24-70 f4. The optical quality won't be as good as the 24-70 f4 or the 24-70 f2.8, but it's still an excellent performer and covers all the same genres, with the benefit of the light gathering ability of f2.8 versus f4. So you have to choose what's more important to you. The Nikkor Z 28-400 is a super wide zoom that will cover lots of things at really high ISOs. It is a wide range zoom, and it will cover walking around, some landscapes, some street photography, and while portrait territory is within its focal range, it wouldn't be highly recommended as your aperture is variable from f4 to f8, so you'll have to shoot at higher ISOs and you may not get a background that you would consider pleasing for portraits. But portraits, however, can be done, especially in the higher end around 200 millimeter. Even at stop down apertures, you can still get a decent background. Going up to 400, it will allow you to shoot some sports and some wildlife, but you might want to make sure that you have plenty of light. The Nikkor Z 35mm f1.8s is perfect for walking around, doing some street photography, some cityscapes, some landscapes, and 35mm happens to be my favorite for scenic portraits. The Nikkor Z 35mm f1.4 will do everything that I just said. It just gathers a tiny bit more light. 
Optically, the 1.8 is superior, but this one is a little less expensive. The Nikkor Z 40mm f2 is doing everything that we just said about the 35mm, no more, no less. The difference between 35 and 40 is stepping back a little bit. If anything, I'd say that we're pretty much out of the cityscape territory that I like to be in. But we're not quite there for landscapes. You could still do some landscapes. We have two lenses now. 50 millimeters. We have the Nikkor Z 50 millimeter f 1.2s and the Nikkor Z 50 millimeter f 1.8s. They call 50 millimeters nifty 50s. While nifty 50s are said to do almost everything, in my opinion, we are out of the territory of cityscapes and anything wider than cityscapes that we mentioned. This is about where I would cut off landscapes in a traditional sense. The big difference in use case between these lenses is the 50mm f1.2 is going to be better for portraits. f1.2 is going to give the creamiest background that you could possibly get, and it is going to do it slower. The 50mm f1.8 s is still going to do excellent portraits, and it's going to focus faster. The Nikkor Z MC 50mm f2.8 is actually a macro lens. That's what the MC means. It'll do everything that we just discussed with the 50mm f1.2 and f1.8, only this one will do macro shots. The Nikkor Z DX 50 to 250mm f4.5 to 6.3 is officially out of landscape territory in the traditional sense and entered into portrait and minor sports and wildlife. Being at f4.5 to 6.3, You'll want to make sure you have plenty of light if you're going to be doing sports and wildlife, but for portraits, you should be able to get a decent enough blurry background. The Nikkor Z 58mm .95 Noct is a strange use case. It doesn't autofocus, and f.95 is incredible, but extremely narrow in its depth of field. So shooting at .95 requires some serious skill and a very still subject. 58 is in that 50 millimeter range that we discussed earlier, so it will do all those things. But technically, probably the most practical use case for this particular lens, with this lens being practically perfect optically, it has a more commercial use case. But that's not saying that it can't be used in video or by a skilled photographer shooting high-end art. At $8,000, it must be high-end art and it must be selling. We have two lenses again, the Nikkor Z 70 to 180 f2.8 and the Nikkor Z 70 to 200 f2.8. The use case for both of these lenses are the same. Portraits, events, weddings. These lenses are staples in those genres, especially for professional working photographers that need the versatility and speed. 180 and 200 is a little short for sports unless it's Little League, but you may get some use out of these at the zoo or a petting zoo. The main obvious difference is the price. The 70 to 180 costs significantly less than the 70 to 200, but the 70 to 200, both in performance and optical quality, is top tier in the Nikon Z mount system. We have two lenses again, the Nikkor Z 85mm f1.8 s and the Nikkor Z 85mm f1.2 s. Really, these are portrait lenses and that's about it. Portrait lenses are expected to be sharp, render skin tones beautifully, and have beautiful backgrounds. Both of these lenses will do that. The 85mm f1.2 just does it faster, sharper, and more beautifully than the 85mm f1.8. The Nikkor Z 100-400mm f4.5-5.6 VRS is where we have officially stepped into sports, action, and wildlife. Sure, you can absolutely do some portraits with this too. 100 at 4.5 should give you a decent enough background, and 400mm at 5.6, if you're shooting a headshot, you better back up, but it will have a destroyed background. We come across the MC again, another macro lens, the Nikkor Z MC 105 f2.8s. Again, this lens is a macro lens, it just happens to do macro better than the 50mm f2.8. But it doesn't stop there. 105mm is actually pretty useful. This lens happens to be an exceptional portrait lens. 105 may be a little bit long for street photography for some people, but I find this lens to be incredibly fun to walk around with in the street. You can shoot portraits and comings and goings while while being a little further away as not to disturb bystanders. And if you happen to see something cool like a flower in a flower pot, you can snap off that macro. The Nikkor Z 135mm f1.8 s Plena, it has absolutely perfect backgrounds, making it pretty much a perfect portrait lens. However, being a longer focal length at 135, it does get a little more useful for other things as well. 
you're definitely not shooting wildlife, you're probably not shooting sports, but if you're out and about shooting a portrait and a butterfly happens by, you have a better chance of getting it with this than the 85, just because you don't have to be as close. So while it's not incredibly more versatile than the 85mm f1.2 or f1.8, it is slightly more versatile. The Nikkor Z 180-600 f5.6-6.3, I suppose you could do some portraits with it. But this lens's wide super telephoto range makes it an exceptional choice for wildlife, both big and small, and a variety of sports and action. All at a much more affordable price than the rest of the lenses that we'll be seeing. The Nikkor Z 400mm f2.8 TC VRS is pretty much sports action and wildlife territory. Very high level sports action and wildlife territory. And it can do so in worse lighting conditions due to its wide aperture of f2.8. The use case for the Nikkor Z 400mm f4.5 VRS is the exact same as the 400mm f2.8, it's just done at a more affordable price. So your sports, your action, and your wildlife. The Nikkor Z 600mm f4 TC VRS, like the 400 f2.8, has a built-in teleconverter, making it more versatile, and a perfect, albeit incredibly expensive, sports action and wildlife lens. We're now getting into the territory of smaller birds or larger animals that are further away. We are absolutely in safari territory. The Nikkor Z 600mm f6.3 VRS is the same use case as our last lens, but it's less versatile without the teleconverter, but also way less expensive, almost $10,000 less expensive. It'll get the same kind of jobs done. And finally, we have the Nikkor Z 800mm f6.3 VRS. We're still in sports territory if you're further away, but this lens is really popular for bird photographers as it is perfect for small birds. In general, this lens is in the territory of certain types of wildlife photography. It's your photography, and you can do whatever you want with any of these lenses. It just so happens that some lenses do some things better. Again, if you want to pick up any of these lenses, the link in the description helps out the channel. I'm Z-Wade, the Z-Wade, and Z-Wade Photo. Stay sharp, YouTube.